Welcome to our world channel. Edgar Morin. The individual or society first. The French philosopher and sociologist Edgar Morin, 1921, is considered one of the great totalitarian thinkers who dealt with various the problems of the times, in a critical, reformist spirit. And he always repeats that we are heading towards the abyss if we do not change the foundations on which states and the economy are built education and modern science. Because the cause of our time and its social and economic ills are mainly due to the fact that modern states organize societies are doing well, but they have also turned themselves into an instrument of oppression and oppression, and that modern science has made leaps great quality and has helped solve many of our problems, but it has also become one of the most life-threatening tools humans. Especially after its association with modern technology in the manufacture of nuclear weapons. The global economy is booming. But the number of poor people is also increasing at an unprecedented rate. The harshness of Moran's criticism of our contemporary civilization is due to his belief that despite the progress that has been made in however, social disintegration, adolescent problems and generational conflict have reached unprecedented levels. Although the New World Order has achieved acceptable stability, conflicts and wars are spreading wildfire. Just as there is significant growth in the global economy, economic crises rear their heads from time to time global instability. Moran's concerns stem mainly from his observation that what he calls the three myths of modernity, which are the myth that scientific progress will bring happiness to all. The myth that man will fully control the universe, and the myth that history necessarily progresses for the better, it is fading away little by little. Today, Scientific progress is in the hands of the major powers that control it and exploit it against those who disagree with it, as is the case modern man is no longer able to control the universe. And the evidence for this is the corona pandemic that has killed lives of millions of people. As for happiness, it was lost amidst the statistics that indicate the terrible rise in the numbers of people living in isolation and misery as well as a decline in social solidarity and a sense of moral responsibility. The reason for these crises is that the world does not necessarily lead to progress, peace and prosperity. As most believe humans, because there are major, conflicts, that drive this world, global economic conflicts, the conflict between the state and the individual. The conflict between the individual and society, the conflict of identities and nationalities, the conflicts between states, the bullying of states' dictatorship over its people. Therefore, if modern man does not know how to manage these conflicts and harness them to serve his major interests, then the future will remain uncertain. And no futurist can predict what the universe will be like yet several decades. One of Moran's most important methods for discovering conflicts within societies is conceptual analysis. In order to discover contradictions within it, he analyzes the concept of individual freedom, for example, in the West to find that despite although this freedom brought independent life, respected privacy, and limited human exploitation of one another, it is it also brought the Western man isolation and family disintegration as well as made him more selfish and a socially cold being. And when analyzing the concept of equality, which is one of the three pillars of modernity, freedom, equality, fraternity, he finds that the Western world wants it for itself and its people. But it does not want it for other peoples. Therefore, in the end, he concludes that it is necessary to rethink the truisms, that educate us and we learned it in schools and universities in order to face the crisis of human existence, where social life is lacking. To love, solidarity, and a sense of responsibility, and where the individual suffers from loneliness, psychological stress, and general anxiety, and feelings suspicious of everything that surrounds him. And where the suffering of marginalized groups continues. Moran gives these problems a priority in his thinking because he does not consider them marginal. As he always repeats that the problems of families' adolescence, the marginalized, and the inhabitants of rural and urban areas carry within them, in a concentrated manner. 
the problems of our civilizations. The complex relationship between the individual and society. In his analysis of the relationship of the individual to society, Moran stands against excessive Western individualism that turns society into an abstraction, a servant of the individual, and a protector of his personal freedoms, without any appreciation for the role and values of society. Moran, however, is also against the collectivism that exaggerates the respect and reverence of society and supports its control over the individuals completely to conclude that the individual has freedoms that must be fully enjoyed, and a private life that must be respected however. Society also has a role and position that must be present in public life, but how is this done? The problem of excessive individualism is that it has made the contemporary individual fall into selfishness and self-centeredness and its requirements. Even the contemporary individual thinks only of himself, his needs, and his standard of living. This, in turn, led to an increase in people's livelihood anxiety, which means constant thinking of raising standard of living and self-entertainment to the fullest extent possible. As for the most important problem caused by excessive individualism, it is the decline in individuals' sense of responsibility towards their societies, and the atrophy of life social, as well as the decline of public morals. As for the problem of society, which throughout history constituted an independent entity, from the individual, it goes back to he tries to impose his interests and standards on the individual almost coercively. With the passage of time, societies have accounts and interests that do not coincide with the interests and accounts of individuals. Because society is in the end it does not care about the interests of its members as much as it cares about the interests of the powerful and prestige groups that control it. Consequently, this society has often turned into a tool for ignoring the interests and rights of individuals. Therefore, Moran believes that the relationship between the individual and society throughout history is one of perpetual conflict through which society tries to dominate the individual. And the individual tries through it to confront society and the power of the groups that dominate it run it. With the establishment of the role of the modern state, it seems that the balance of power has become more in favor of society. Today, states support society and use it to control individuals. Just as the ability of society to organize itself has become greater flexibility. Therefore, Moran believes that society is stronger than the individual and has a longer life, because individuals die. But society remains alive, he regenerates his strength and rehabilitates himself. Moran therefore describes society as a giant monster, an analogy he borrows from the British philosopher Hobbes. The role of identity in modern societies. As for the two most common means through which society tries to control individuals and limit their freedoms and interests, they are feeling belonging to identity and consumerism. The issue of identity and its role in the relationship between the individual and society is due to a simple reason, which is that every identity bears within them a tendencies that help society control the individual and control his private freedoms. The problem is complicated if we know the majority of countries tend to control individuals through society, taking advantage of human psychological and cultural needs and spiritual to belonging to an identity he feels. Even the majority of dictatorial countries invest in fueling identities in order to impose their hegemony on individuals and control them. Investing in fueling social cultural and religious identities until the possibility of politicians and rulers controlling the public sphere becomes greater, and their ability to direct people becomes easier. As fear for identity pushes individuals to make concessions in favor of the state, which in any case deceives them as a protector of their identities. With the advent of the modern state, especially the nation-state in modern Europe, the frequency of harnessing belonging to identity has increased in order to impose an individual's obedience to society. Even those countries exaggerated the link between the existence of the individual on the one hand, 
and his dedication to serving his country on the other hand, that is, transforming the existence of the individual into a matter belonging to the homeland, which is what made entire peoples turn into a machine that serves the groups that control the country. And they are satisfied, under the illusion that they are thus serving their countries. Dot. To the extent that Moran holds the issue of fueling identities responsible for dragging humanity into wars and bloody conflicts that have killed millions. Humans. The problem is complicated today because the contemporary world is witnessing an alliance of major powers through globalization, and this globalization often it resorts, by its nature, to immerse individuals in an excessive consumerism, which makes the individual a usurper of his life, materialism and securing his growing need, and thus the position of the individual becomes weak. Once again, because he is controlled here by society and the state too, but this time through big business and the media. However, if dictatorial states use fueling identities as a means to impose their control over their people, then states' democracy today, in a postmodern era, is less interested in investing in identities than it is in investing in identities transforming the individual into a consumer object. It is well known that the most important characteristic of consumer societies is that it distances people from their affiliations, identities, and cultural diversity and reduce his life to living in the material world. This means, for Moran, that the issue of identity is addressed in different ways. So that we have to work on reducing the overemphasis on identities in societies controlled by dictatorial regimes on the one hand and work to root belonging to the identity in societies controlled by democratic regimes. Here Moran puts forward the concept of, human identity, through which individuals can retain their national identities religious and tribal, but that these identities be within a human horizon. Away from fanaticism, racism, and fueling the feelings of superiority, because human beings, in the end, form one universal family and that their differences in identities and cultures must be, be a factor of enrichment, not a factor of conflict. Society is stronger but individuals are the foundation. Although the previous picture of the relationship between individuals and societies gives the greatest role to society, as well as to the state that stands behind him. But Moran believes that the rudder of the relationship is run by the individual and not society at the end ultimate and he meets in this idea with the scholars of the Frankfurt School, who in turn warn against the contemporary state devouring man modern civil, but they believe that man is able to confront that state, and the major economic forces that stand behind her. Therefore, Moran believes that the individual also has elements of strength through which he can resist the state and society. The first of these elements is, consciousness, because, in the end, Man is the center of consciousness within society, and for the sake of society. However, the problem of a person is that he does not think about his conditions and misfortunes until it is too late. Because that is a relationship the individual in society is a relationship of overlap, contradiction and complementarity at the same time. Interpenetration means that the individual lives within the community, but the community also lives within the individual, so that I have the individual has individual freedom in relation to society. But society also constitutes an organized whole whose retrograde characteristics influence the individual. Dot. Thus, individuals produce society, which in turn produces individuals. As for antithesis, it means that society represses the impulses, desires and hopes of the individual, which in turn tend to resist the pressures and prohibitions of society. With regard to complementarity, it means that the relationship of the individual and society is a double relationship, which is, in fact, an association and competitive. In the sense that individuals compete with society just as interests conflict, but society also brings them together, especially time of wars and vices of eternity. Thus, Moran is not inclined to eliminate one party for the sake of another, 
because he believes that each party needs to the other. And therefore we find him striving to establish a kind of balance between the two sides of the equation, while giving the initiative to individuals because society is the strongest in the end. There is no substitute for a return to the values of modernity. The solution to all those social, political and cultural problems that we talked about cannot be done, according to Moran, except through return to the three values of modernity, freedom, equality, fraternity, and reconsideration of the universality of human rights, that is to say among other things, this means that countries should raise the importance of their homelands and their specificities. But at the same time they do not it allows this exaltation to turn into, national isolation, and racism against others. At the same time, these countries must raise their sense of moral responsibility towards their people on the one hand, and towards our, cosmic crises, on the other hand. It also means that individuals are indispensable for societies, but the relationship must be based on mutual respect rights, freedoms, and cultural specificities. And for individuals to work to reduce the domination of influential groups over society, those groups which does not hesitate to harness society in order to serve its interests. Thanks for watching and see you in a new video.